first hit single, Big yes. Pink. You know, let us know, when did that hit the radios? How long after you recorded it and all of that? Right. Um, you know, like I was just talking to Fresh, I'm just saying how, how like singing your, like a song with your name is sort of like vanity of it. <laughs> it was like, let me sing a song mentioning your own name. Like, you love like, yourself. You know, you really love yourself. <laughs> then I'm here wearing a shirt with my own name. <laughs> and I'm like, Ay, am then I pushing it too much? Your, your own name. Tattoo, your own name. <laughs> so I'm a Taurus. So I was even Googling Taurus. So Tauruses are like our son. Our son, wait, let me... Let, let me just share this. Our sun is individuality. So we are grounded, mm -hmm. refined, and patient. Uh, refined and patient. Put that down. I don't know if that <laughs> accurately <laughs> describes <laughs> us. <laughs> Moving along. <laughs> Here we go. Okay, okay. Um, so I remember now Banda was the one who was telling me because now I've heard the song definitely, so I'm excited to hear the song. So he tells me the song has been released. Um, go, uh, if you want to listen to it, it should be playing. I think it is on. on Mudoni Brick was show. Mudoni Brick has been the best afternoon show and she had one of the best like local shows then. Um, so you know it was a whole different vibe. So that's when the the business of Big Pit really entered. Because when that's when I was being called for now a gig. Yeah. That's what that's when we started going for gigs. Like mm -hmm. like our first gigs, I'm like, wow, you know. And I remember going for our first ever ever gig mm -hmm. and we went for it was for Pilsner Pool Challenge. Nice. And I remember we since there were no videos or anything we had to pay entrance to enter our a gig which we were performing in because <laughs> really? the bouncer yeah the bouncer wow. is like uh it's for it was 250 so it took it took 50 ringgit because he seemed to perform but who are you there's not your video oh, like, people don't there know big no there are no flyers there's no, no video so people know your song but, but they, they don't, don't know, know you me. you know oh. So we had to pay imagine to enter because wow. the promoter is inside him is waiting for you guys you know like so it was and there were no mobile phones there were no say mobile right. phones <laughs> oh my god so anyway but it was it was um it was like one of our best performances because remember we went like a south sea so we told everyone in the estate wow. yo us guys have a show man they come through so our friends came through i remember like it wasn't really packed mm -hmm. we had like let's say it was a small venue you know it was no it was a splash it was, a splash. It was big okay. but we had um uh like let's say 30 people oh yeah it wasn't like whatever it wasn't like a concert it was just for you know you know those, those events where you just need entertainment on the side yeah <laughs> we are just those guys yeah so out of the 30 people almost like 20 or 15 well our Your guys friends. like our guys from south sea mm -hmm. so you know it was like a home break it's like us guys have come from home south sea yeah. we're coming with our guys to Kani, yeah. and these are people you're raping i remember those days it was more about groups and yeah. camps yeah. and hoods remember even yeah. from the hood we are from south sea we are from this say whatever yeah. so it was like a rap thing you know mm -hmm. so it was really cool and really exciting so they went and we went on now now the gigs are coming in a bit more um um i remember now Issa, I think I released Boomba Train with, with Nameless at that point mm -hmm. when I was, I was, when I think I released Big Pin because my song was in a compilation, Ogopa 2. Oh. It was the first song in the compilation. Mm -hmm. So my song it took a bit long to come out because there had to, well, there was a structure, you know, it was like, um, it was like, um, I mean, it was run like a business. So there was yeah. a structure of this song has come out before this song. Mm -hmm. So I remember that's the time Boomba Train had come out, and I remember. So we used to do a lot of sessions with Issa because every every session was there. I was there. Mm -hmm. You know, every 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 song is known. So we go, we jam, we meet. Meeting the producer was like gold, people. You know, when people say that they are having a meeting Lucas was not easy because he has a schedule of. Remember this a stable of. This name is this red sun, this Gooks Mini Banton, this Amani, this Wahoo, this me, this Klepto, this, this, this like 15 people. Everyone wants attention. Oh. Everyone wants a song. Everyone wants a project out. Was there friction and competition between artists at that definitely, time? Definitely, definitely. Yeah, because there's competition. You want your song to be better than yeah. this other person's yeah. artist. Definitely. Was it like competitive sports? Or like no, competitive sports. Uh, not haters. Competitive sports, uh, yeah, you know. Okay. So even remember the producer used to do this. He used to play you your song. Like, like he doesn't, after like he records the song. Mm. He, it's only him who has it. Mm -hmm. He doesn't play it for you. He plays it for another someone artist. else. So another artist. Yeah. So the other artists come and tell you, like name is come and tell you, or Nyash or, or, or Issa or someone else, just come and tell you, wow, I had your song, it's fire, yeah. but you've not even heard oh, it. Okay. <laughs> then he plays for you another their song, song or mm -hmm. someone else's song. So it's like, I also had your song, it's fire. So oh. it was more of a, you know, so it's, it, like there was it created, support. There was, there was like support. support. Was support. Yeah. So, so like it created like anticipation of, wow, I can't wait to hear, you know, yeah. so it's like, all right, yeah. it's such a nice place to be in. Mm. 
you know. So, so now the show started coming in, and now we're seeing the essence of now the business. Because yeah. all this time, remember, just writing you were having poems, fun, you were writing poems, poems in your book, whatever. In your yeah, now yeah. we're like, we're being called and we're being paid. I remember, even even like this splash show, we paid, I think, 5,000 books. Wow. Yes, then we went, and, we went to jeans in Nairobi West and bought fries and <laughs> chips and cookies for everyone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Remember, we had a team nice. of like 15 guys. Yeah, so it was so, it, that was like the vibe, you know. Because uh -huh. they're still like young, they're still staying with their parents. Yeah, so, you know, like the money was like pocket yeah. money. Like, yeah, you know. So at this point, that's your first show. That was that's your like first our major really first show. show. Yeah. Yeah. First so show. now tell us like one of your most impressionable shows. Oh, wow, 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 wow. Wow, I have impressed the shows. I have, I have. I think that my best show ever was in Rwanda. Mm -hmm. um, were you surprised that you had an audience in Rwanda? It was crazy because first of all, even how we were treated to go to Rwanda those days, mm -hmm. like we were paid for first class flights. Mm -hmm. We were picked up in like limos. I mean, not mm -hmm. like in four by fours. I remember when me and Azizi and they pick up, everyone has their own car. Wow. And the other nice. security guy, like it was well run professionally. You know, yeah. it's not just, okay, you guys come. This was different because they feel like if they're hosting you, like they take care of you as a mm. guest. I know it was, those are things which were really big to us then. They're like, what? We're being paid for flights. We're, for first class, we're being picked up in whatever. You're only nice. 22, 21. Wow. You know, you're, you're performing in crowds like 40,000 people. I remember wow. that was my best show. Yes, wow. my mother. That was my best because 40, we 40,000. 40,000. And when you paid, was the compensation? In yeah, the, yeah, I mean, it was, I mean it, was, it was okay for that time. For that it was really time. good for a 21 year old. Yeah. yeah. You know, it, 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 and it, it that, was really that good. That makes me, want to, it makes me want to ask you like, getting into the industry at 21. Were you at 19. At, yeah, yeah, at nineteen. But I'm saying like like that show, yeah. you know, at that time you were big at that age of, of twenty one. Yeah. How did you navigate like uh, avoiding such things like alcoholism, drugs, uh, you know, too much yeah. party? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it, I think it was just more of you see, that's when my personality came to to help me. Because remember I was always like a chilled person. Mm -hmm. So yes, I used to party like I even even now, what has even made me more social is my line of work. Mm. If it was like a doctor, I would have just been still the same guy. He would be a loner. He would be a loner, be a loner. yeah. Mm. So that really helped me because I was really forced to to sort of like I did it because you have to do it. Even like I remember like I used to smoke and I smoked for quite some time. Mm -hmm. And it was out of time to be cool. To fit in. To fit in. There was you know, that peer pressure. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying. The yeah, peer pressure. The peer pressure. And it, it was so funny because funny enough, during that time, I was actually alone. Like, I did stay with my parents, and like, my mom had left. Immediately I finished high school, my mom left and went to the States mm -hmm. for almost like 10 years. So all this time, I'm um, being big pain. I'm just alone. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm, like, I stay with my bro, definitely. But mm -hmm. we are, like, I am responsible. I think maybe I was given, like, the responsibility maybe a bit earlier. Because mm -hmm. now I had to be responsible, take care for my, younger take care brother. of my younger brother. So, yeah. yes, as much as, yes, with party, yes, but those sort of like a cup of a the limit at the back of mind where like, okay no, don't have overdo to, it yeah. you know the, you have there's someone who's looking up to you mm -hmm. you have to take care you know you have to show you know like i tried like, to my level yeah, of yeah, what, yeah, yeah but it wasn't time. yeah it, it wasn't that bad so at least the grounding really helped me yeah. and even just my upbringing my my family basically like yeah. my mom's side alcohol always is on not you. yeah not yeah. even that first of all they're really not outgoing people in terms of like the life the party life so i didn't grow up seeing that Oh, you were not exposed to I was exposed early to that. Age. Yeah, like okay. my mom's never drank a whole life. Oh, you know? So it was, yeah. it, it never, wasn't in your family. It wasn't in my family. So at least that really, I can say that really sort of helped me to, mm -hmm. to you know, sort of balance that out. Of course, the times, you know, we're all human, sometimes yeah, it goes you up. Slip up. Yeah, naturally, the, the other naturally. Day sometimes I went out for almost like a year. When you get to, to meet manga, this is another discussion you're going to have. <laughs> you went out for a year, just partying every day. The time day. you went out for a whole year, literally. One year, 365 days. Anyway, that's, oh, another, oh that's another story. Whoa. That's like another story. Was this at the height of your stardom or like? Yeah, that was at the height. That's like uh, 2008, okay. you know. So, so, so going back to the shows. Mm -hmm. So the shows start, now, now like started coming. So, um, one of, um, so there's a gig we were supposed to go for in Nakuru. I remember now all the gigs used to go together for every gig. Mm -hmm. They used to go together for a gig. So there's this gig and then Dan Boombachan. Boombachan is the biggest song then. Mm -hmm. So there's a gig in Akuru. So he says, call for the gigs. Like, wait, you're going for this gig. I'm like, Sasa, you're going for this gig. So I went to sleep over at his house. Mm -hmm. 
We used to be neighbors. Mm -hmm. So you go sleep over and because uh, we were supposed to go together. Mm -hmm. So you wake up and like, but the car is too small because it was supposed to be me, uh, Banda actually. Mm -hmm. um, uh, he's of course nameless and the promoters were going with. So anyway, the car which we were using, they were using was a small project so it couldn't fit all of us. Yeah. So me and Banda, we were like, oh, okay, you guys go because the show was, us guys were just not really performing, mm -hmm. you know, we're just going there for support, for support yeah. yeah. So we're like, ah, okay, cool. So the guy tells me, you know what, I'll tell you about the show. He was like, you get killed. It. So it's like, I'll, like, I'm going to tell you how the show is going to be. So this is like at uh, three, so they leave. So I talked to him again at like 12, like midnight after the show. He's like, you guy, you don't understand. You get mad because he, that's what he's talking about all this. He gets take over, you get understand. This guys need to know, man. Like, this music, this guys yeah. need to know who he says. This, you know, so it's like, we are here. Remember that thing, as guys were talking about? Yeah. Then the crowd was crazy. It was mad. This guy can't wait to come back and tell you. So all this time, I'm sleeping in his house. I'm actually in his room. Oh. Remember? Yeah. So in the morning, there's some stories, oh, there was an accident, okay, ah, okay, fine, there's an accident, but they're okay, yeah, yeah, they're okay, in fact, yeah, so it's like 10, 11, 12, so, um, it gets to a point, hey, there was an accident, even who was got in there, remember, because the, the, the person who was actually in the road was who and Banda, mm -hmm. yeah, who on the road going there, mm -hmm. so they're like, okay, fine, let's wait for, for them to tell us what's up, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. so they get there, it's like, ah, so, so Nameless is okay, he's been taken to hospital, it's like, what he says, I, I think he's been taken to another hospital. Mm -hmm. That's the story right now we're hearing. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, hey, okay, which hospital is this? How comes now people don't know this hospital? Hey, so the mom, now everyone knows about the because the mom like, was in charge the whole day. Mm -hmm. So she comes at four, so there's too much going on. You know, it's like, where are they? There's an accident. So it's like, you know what, let's go. So this is like at six. Let's go to Nakuru. Mm -hmm. Let's find out what's happening. Mm -hmm. So guys are already entering the cars. And then it's like, ah, no, it's even okay. The other guys have gone. Uh, this is just wait. There's no point of traveling at night. You need like other guys are going to sit there. I was like, oh, okay, so you wait. So you wait. Uh, so everyone's always on the phone. It's like, yeah, so we figured, yeah, who is it? And, 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 and so it's, it's, I'm actually seated in, next to, in the living room, next to Issa's mom. There was a chair, so I was sitting in the corner. So Banda calls me, because I've been talking to Banda the whole time, because Banda's in the room. So it's like, yeah, what's up? So, it, so Banda asked me, um, who was Banda? Banda was, I was about to point at him, but yeah, it's Banda. Uh, Banda was um, the, the person who used to manage us on the ground. Oh. So, remember like, how I told you, like, go for the stage. Mm. So, there was Gopa, there was Francis, there was Lucas, who are more the production. Francis was more on the, on the corporate and the, you know, the structure of the camera. Banda was managing us on oh, the ground. Oh, so the manager any, at the time. At the time. So, yeah. anything happening on the ground, Banda is to the camera. Mm. So, Banda tells me, just tells me, like, where are you? I'm like, I'm at Issa's place. Where are you exactly? I'm like, I'm sitting next to the mom. So, to get as me, I'm sorry, like, I couldn't make it, you know. So, an accident. Oh. So, it was like a whole, you know, I mean, it's death, it's, it's crazy. So, the mom, I remember the mom just said, you know what, let's kneel down and pray. So, she just prayed. It's like, she like a feeling. I think the whole, anyway, she just told us to, to kneel down and pray. So, she just prayed and just went, it was just a bluff from there, you know. Oh. Everyone just like, what no so that was a really dark part in for me especially i mean i was sitting i'm looking at his bro i'm like if i'm feeling like this how is how is how is the family feeling how is whatever feeling yeah. i'm actually in his room you know like you know so anyway it was like crazy so we so i mean the funeral happens and for me now i go to like a phase because now this is a person who was Always writing looking, with, writing ways, looking up to, because it's that sort of whole, you know, yeah, it's like, I need to, this, this is the strategy, yeah, you know, yeah. this is whatever my, my pal. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it really took time. And for, for me, it really took a while. I never believed it was there. I used to think like, it's like a, it's like a two-pack thing. Until like you get this, like 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 yeah. you know, like those things just come yeah. right. I'm like, you know, like even our favorite song was so crazy. Because this song by R. Kelly, it's called, um, For My Niggas. Call Nika for my niggas. That used to be your favorite song. And every time I listen to that song, it's like the same thing. It's like he sort of knew. And when people talk about, sort of knew about his death, even his music, even the, how he wrote the song. There's a song called, called, um, Bila Spiata, and Safiri Kwenye Barabara, and Maisha Tayat, Meza Kota Pancha. Kwa Ivo Natembea, 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 Kwa
a song that was dear to his heart. It, it, it's his album. Yeah. It's, it's his yeah. album, yeah. 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 Hamnitishi. So how can I forget? They did Italian. Mm. And he talks about how getting into an accident, you know, you never know how life is, can die any time. You talk about it in that song. You know, so it's sort like of like had a, a, a premonition about yeah. it. Yeah. So anyway, it was a really weird space for me because now it really now I had to come out now out of dependence of this person who brought me into this into all these hopes now now i'm alone now and i have to be big thing yes i've recorded but you see you always need that that reaffirmation yeah, of yeah you, you, you know when you think about this song yeah, yeah or whatever yeah. so you know so that also took me time to adjust and Did just you get want to back. continue into music after that honestly no honestly i was just yeah. like i it was too because every time i got this it's like i need someone the only person i think about is him because we, like we were there, we were there, the whatever, you know, system. so it really took, you know, like, it was like a fight, but I was like, you know, he would want me to continue, to do whatever, so that was like the drive also, you know, cause, so after that I just picked up on, that's when I started doing now, um, I did now Big Pain, so now I came back now to life, you know, I did now Natafuta, mm-hmm. so Natafuta was like one of my biggest songs, because Natafuta actually won me, the best male artist for East Africa. Wow. In East Africa, imagine. Wow. You know, so it was like, and it was my first ever video oh. as well. You know, I was going against, um, I think, Red Sun, Chameleon, um, some two guys from Rwanda and Ethiopia. In the category Best Male Artist East Africa, the nominees are Ade Allen, Ethiopia. Red Sand, Kenya. Eddie Rush, Uganda. Jose Camilione, Uganda. Shwandani Alu, Ethiopia. Big Ken, Kenya. You know, so I couldn't go for the award because the ceremony, because the award ceremony was on the same day as my dad's birthday. And for you to receive anything, there was money, because I think you're receiving like half a million Ken shillings then. For you to receive the money, you have to, you have to be there because yeah. they want the presence to be there. They want you to pick up their word and talk to it. So it's either that or that. Definitely, there's no way I'm not going for my dad's funeral yeah. for my word. So it was a bittersweet moment. So there was excitement, you know. Like I remember, like watching it on TV. Like I was watching, you know, now them reading their words, mm-hmm. saying, and my whole family because now we are in charge mm-hmm. at the funeral. So it's just the day after. And the winner is Big Pen. Big Ben can unfortunately not be with us tonight, but we will eventually give him his award. Now I'm the biggest artist then, the biggest award in the country. I have gigs everywhere, so now I'm, now I'm on tour, you know, yeah. now I'm... Um, I like a energy. That's when now we, we do uh, talk to you with the money yeah. and patoni. Was that during the tour? No, that was now 2014. Okay. Oh, okay. Now, now I'm on recording. Now he's now I'm on now I'm on beast mode. You know, okay. so I'm on recording. So I did uh, talk to you with the money and patoni. I did Natafuta. I did uh, Teramos. Now there's a lot of gigs there. So I started ent- now I really enjoying now the business of the aspect music, the business of, yeah. aspect of it. You know. I'm on tours, I'm going to Rwanda, and I'm wait, telling you, I have 40,000 people. Yeah. I went to Tanzania, I went I toured all over Kenya. There's no town I can think of which I didn't go to, yeah. you know, from Mandera to Voi to yeah. Ukambani. Have you, have you to, done any international? Yeah, so I did international. Then so I went to the States. I mean, I went to, to South Africa. After Since I couldn't go for the award, they invited me because I told them the story. So they invited me for the next award, mm-hmm. but just to be a part of it and to perform as well. So I went and performed for the next year's call. I mean, uh, 2005, I think the call was launched then mm-hmm. uh, in Durban. I did um, Amsterdam because we did Festival Mundial. And we did a bit of Europe and Belgium. Um, we did uh, Rwanda, as I said, Tanzania, Uganda. Oh, UG was marvelous. Way that one of the one of that's one of the best. Imagine we we that when was Uganda? I think it was in 2002. And we went to Uganda. Do you know the meaning of being hired for a private jet? Mm. 
Late nice. Yes, okay, it wasn't a type jet, like it was an airline, but it was only Ogopa artists. Oh, nice. You get, I remember like the organizer telling us, you know, you guys now be the plane, it's only yours, and you land on, you know, there'll be a limo, and the Nino, and you're looking at this girl like, hey, this guy's exaggerating. <laughs> this guy funny thinks you're what? I mean, it was baby cool telling us that. I Are remember even serious? seated like, I remember like I was seated like next to Nameless, and we were looking at each other. It wasn't funny. So we're like, hey, this guy has pushed it. Okay, we know we're Nini, but it's not that okay, man. <laughs> So I remember we, we go, that was the, the, my first ever international flight to go for a gig. Wow. So we enter this flight and you know, now it was an Anagopa show, so it was, at least, it was a lineup of artists. It was Goodsbury Banton, there was Red Sun, there was, there was Nameless, there was Amani, there was me, there was... Yes, I didn't even have my song out yet, I was just putting there because we had done Bamba. Mm -hmm. I was still leeching on, uh, on, on Bamba with collabs there, yeah, you know. Yeah. And, um, and we get to the airport, we get to the plane, you get, the plane is just us. We're like, what? This girl's actually serious. It's like, yeah. So we land into a table and there's so much commotion. So we think that maybe we've landed at the same time as like the president or someone who's like prominent or something. Apparently the whole town is waiting for Ogopa what? DJs. Are you so we land in like this and that's the first time we actually experience like stardom, like the yeah. full real stardom. We're like, yeah. what? We're being told, don't even handle your bags here. There's a van that takes the bags. You, there are two limos. There's a white one and a black one. So we all split. Wow. In the limo. So I think we're like 14 or 13 artists. So we're split in the limo. Six years, seven years. Then we're following each other in an entourage from Entebbe with trucks blaring Gopa One music. The whole like an entourage of like 10, 11 cars. Wow. You know, there's a big sponsorship. I know like Ugandans are big on showbiz. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, so it was odd. We were on radio stations, we were on TVs. We were staying in a five star hotel. We were, it was like crazy. Like that is the first. Like we were like, what we're living like, you know, like from celebrities, daddy, like true celebrities, like true you know. Celebrities. And, you know, and it was packed and it went and the show was amazing. We used to do numbers. When they see numbers now, we used to do numbers. We're telling forty thousand in Uganda, we did almost what it was how big? Thirty. Wow. Thirty thousand. Wow. And those are the numbers. There was no social media then. Yeah. yeah. There's no pictures to yeah. show you yeah. video. So maybe like there are a few now videos which you took, but no. During that time, the, you know, we guys lost footage of some, but there's some which we are trying to get on. So anyway, so so yeah, so I was, this was me then, so I was on tour, so I went to the States then I, I, for my last tour. And I, when I came back is when um, uh, there was now roars with with production houses, people are leaving mm. now. They remember mm. you guys talking about the beef, yeah, there was yeah. Badman camp formed. Mm. There was now people feeling like, uh, everyone getting now the short end getting the, the short yeah. stick, everyone feels like you, you know. So those really, those are really those tension. animosities. And the most now people are leaving. Um, now the camp, then you know. So I was just like, from that time, this 2009, I just done my tour. Well, this structure is set up so that there's a, there's a way that if you exited, you kept like your royalties. Was there like a, a structure? Like no, there was that. There was no. that. No, like yeah. the structure was there. The problem is not even the structure. It's now the agreement on. Mm -hmm. on on what to move on from here because everyone now feels me i want an album for example yeah this guy wants an album whatever now uh, nani wants an album i want my song out because already tested already tested the fame already tested yeah. that now you need more content so that to make more money yeah, you get yeah. remember all this time you're working with one producer yeah it's yeah. not that there's someone else this is one person who's making all the, all those ogopa beats it's not that there's like someone else it's one person who's making all of them uh -huh. so even guess what point there's the is so even, even even him like I thought if he got like overwhelmed it's too much. Even as as much as we were trying to build the structure, no one really understood even the music industry because it was Ogopa who brought out that whole buzz. Yeah. That whole That's what I was, you know. Yeah, yeah. So it was so for me personally, I just went on, you know, I was just like, ah Manze, I it think I've done like you're lost in the like I'm lost box. and I've I've already done that, I've already toured, I've done my whatever. Let me just come and back and just forward. yeah. There's nothing here because now, at the same time, I depended on Ogopa because yeah. I was. Remember, this is from 20 what 19. Yeah. Yeah. From there till I'm 26. Oh. You know, so I'm just like, ah, let me just <laughs> look for something else to do. You know, whatever. So that's when I went on my break, mm. on, on my mm. on my hiatus break. So I decided to go on corporate. I did now marketing and advertising. I was doing. Um, I was an account manager. How did that humble you? Because like going from 
being a star and going everywhere and people are waiting on yeah. you. Chris, Chris, Chris. I mean, big pain, big pain, big pain. It and then now you're coming and you have to be answerable to, to a, a boss. boss to, you have to yeah. have proposals you to do. It was very, it was very hard for me at first because I never, like my life was on entertainment because yeah. I wake up, I work on my times, yeah. my studies on my times and now here you have a proposal to do. Mm. You, have, yeah. you, have, you have a report to do. Yeah. You have, uh, and then it's a nine to five, five something that we're not job. used to because you were used to like being free, free or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so it, it really took me, it really took me time and like to adjust. And luckily enough, the people who are, like I was working with understood, and also young people, so they really like embraced me in well. So they could understand, you know, sometimes they get upset about some things. Yeah. But it also it's also grounded me as well because yeah. I, I got to understand a different perspective of life as opposed to just being this other side of, of a celebrity and and, 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 uh, and music and whatever. So I got to understand how really life is in terms of this other side, you know. How were you with money? People. Had you had you saved money like you know, had you were you good with money like you had investments? What do you feel like you spent your money wisely? And uh, I would say I spent it wisely. <laughs> you were young. <laughs> I was young but I didn't spend it badly. As well, mm -hmm. meaning I didn't. Uh, of course, now I feel it's like ah, you know what? I would have, I would have invested more. I just feel like I would have, maybe would have invested. I did invest, you know, like I did buy a couple of properties here and there, mm -hmm. uh, not how, not homes, but just land here and there. Mm -hmm. But now, if I was put in that position, I feel definitely I would have invested much better. But you know, yeah. I never look at it as a regret because I always look at it as a, as a learning or whatever. Because you have to get there for you to learn yeah. it or whatever. So I don't feel like I, you know, I would have done something. Like I think yeah. what I did. Was did, okay. for the knowledge, for the had knowledge which the I time. had at, at the time, yeah. I think I did okay. You know, yeah. I was I was responsible to some yeah. 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 How so. long? How long or how many years? How long were you in the corporate world? I was in the corporate world for three and a half years, four years. What year? Um, still is. Uh, of course, of yeah, course. Still is, still is, but yeah, pleasure. yeah. Just to understand how, how the, the business was. Like, like, hold on, hold on. What's going to do? Like in the corporate, like that nine to five job you had. Like when you quit. Yeah. Like what did you do? Did you just? Here is my resignation, or did you like slam it on the? <laughs> I'm out. <Yes. laughs> Going back to music. As I told you, like they were, they were, they were, they were like really warm to me, oh, like as well. So, so it, you know, it's sort of like the family, you know. So it was I really. Drop the so you know, just like you know, it's okay. You just do your thing, <laughs> you know. Man. Just do, yeah. just vibe or whatever. Yeah. And it was just like I. It's good. It's actually good that I entered that because really, really, really made me understand. Now the ethics of both ends of business, yeah, of just of how working. whatever, yeah. also just growing up a bit older and yeah. having that. So I felt like that that really helped me to just to just to get to know myself a bit better. Yes, mm -hmm. I keep want to learn every day and yeah. different perspective and different whatever. But it helped me really understand a lot, you know, from different from different perspectives of life as just as Crispin as as just as, as just as me growing up and just uh, as as. Um, as a new way, because it's like a new is like, oh, sh this is what happens. Oh, I go, so this is how people work. Yeah. Oh, when someone tries to live at five, it's not yeah. just this. Also, this is what happens. Mm. You have to, like, you're accountable for this. Yeah, and you know, you're this, for this, yeah. this, and you know, the nitty gritty you know, like, there's some things I used to, like, uh, like, poo-poo's up. That's like, but it's not so important. No, everything, yeah, you know, like, those, yeah. some nitty gritties mm -hmm. made me better. Yeah. I think, like, made me better, made me learn better, better structures better person and just understand business and even as 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 i'm as i'm as i'm starting this big piece radius mm -hmm. <laughs> you know as i'm starting this it's just yeah. a way to just show people what i've been going through and who i've been meeting on yeah. and, and 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 um what i'm up to and what i'm thinking at the time and mm -hmm. you know, as we continue we'll just and you know, honestly what a, what a lot of artists fail to realize is that this music like being an artist with that job it's 90 percent business and 10 percent yeah, at the end yeah, of the day and, you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, and especially for us guys who are from a different era where there's no like now i see the platforms like this social media yeah, yeah, we, didn't have yeah, that. We, yeah. we were dependent a you, lot you on, are so like now you can get rid of the middleman you needed the middleman back yeah, then you couldn't, yeah because yeah. yeah. now you can just go straight to the fans yeah, you can just shoot a video for your you needed the middleman and there was there's so much intricacies that went into that yeah. Yeah. but they made a lot of sense those yeah. intricacies like made yeah. a lot of sense because yeah. there's a way things need that to that you work. needed to be guided to be guided anyway. yeah, yeah exactly yeah so it was a guided. very different a yeah. very different approach even the feel was just wow you know. yeah. yeah and how do you how do you feel like when new artists coming up like when you were coming up and now like you see these young kids coming up what what 
how would how would you say that they have an advantage over you? Of course, social media is one advantage, but what other thing would you advise them? Like you know, as I think the power they have is they have the power on literally on this thing on the yeah. phone because yeah. you have yeah. as the social media is basically. Yes, as much as whatever, people want to see, people want to interact more, people want to engage more. So it's just the content which creator will give it out. That's the advantage they have. As you said, you don't need a middleman. The only disadvantage is, is you really have to, because now there's a lot, so you really have to stand out, you really have to be more yeah. So people are really, I feel like some people are using, going really overboard yeah. to really get whatever. But yeah. anyway, it's just how, how you whatever. So that, I feel the advantage they have is, is, is you can... It's social media. I think social media has really changed a um, big, 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 big perception of, of even the, how music is being consumed. Yeah, it's yeah. so now, fast now. Like if I want to show you my song, like you, right now, you don't have can... to go wait for the for a, for like a TV show like we used yeah. to. At you have to wait for my for. The, if you listen to a song, you, you have, have to go to, go to, go to radio. radio. Yeah, yeah? And, and you listen actually to have to go to DJs to ask them to play songs. Your, your yeah, song. and DJs are playing instrumental because now DJs yeah. were the bridge. Yeah. DJs were, were the bridge. Were the social media yeah, for that yeah. time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that they also now come into control, the middle and, and control and bring now music to the people. What we listen to, what we heard, yeah. how many yeah. times we heard how it. Exactly. <laughs> how many times we heard it? Yeah, because yeah. put on the radio stations, the guy who's programming decides. How many yeah, is the, exactly, the club exactly? Yeah. Exactly. So, so from the corporate world to now, like to what yeah. happened in between? Uh, what happened between? I just went on on. A break. Yeah, there was COVID definitely. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so everyone just took a, like the world took a break. Yeah, <laughs> and how 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 did this pandemic affect your music or yeah. you you as an artist? Did it affect your money making? Did it affect like what what what? For me, it was it's actually it's. It's been one of the best times of my life, funny enough. Yeah. The COVID yeah. period, yes, it's been a disaster in terms of like business and in terms of anything, whatever. But in terms of me as a person, it helps it's you been, grow. Because it, it, I really took time to just stop get to know my, just stop and think. Yeah. You know, there's always yeah. grind, hustle, let's make money, yeah. do this, whatever. Yeah. But I don't really, you don't really get to know yourself. So that that break really made me just stop and just reflect. you know who am I, what yeah. do I want to be, what where you know just reflect deeper, mm. get to know. Um, like understand yourself more. Like for me, I understood myself more. I tried to be more open. I tried to mold myself to a certain way. You know, like it took time reading a lot of uh, inspiration, you know, um, um, books, books, yeah. um, getting uh, getting to know, uh, be more aware of, be yourself, more aware your of environment. environment, who yeah. you talk to, who yeah. you associate with, who you want, where you want to go. So it really helped me. Shape. Just shape everything together. Yeah. You know? Even even this concept for this radius came actually from came pandemic. from the pandemic. I was just yeah. like, I need, like, I feel like I have so much to talk about, but I don't know how to talk. You yeah. know, like that's never been my thing. It's like, but why don't you know how to talk? You yeah. Just talk. You know, yeah. so it's like, why don't you just start something? Look for thank your people. It's like Yahoo. Yeah, like it really took me time. It's like I need people who who are like know me to a certain level. Yeah. You know, who, yeah. who I can talk to. So hence hence this. You know, so this was like a baby of of yeah. that. So, so for me, it was it was a very good space for me yeah. to find myself creatively as a person. And yeah. speaking of creatively, yeah. have you were you recording music during the pandemic? Are we like looking forward to a new album? What? I know. So I, I in the middle of that like I was concentrated more on me, but I'm now I'm thinking of starting to see maybe they can start creating more content, but I'm still on, on the pipeline. So that's where I am. Yeah, but it's giving me that that bubble, that whatever. Because yeah, mm. after the hiatus, like you know, you said it took some time onto the corporate world. Yeah. Did you find it harder to create? Like, do you ever get like Definitely. writers block? Definitely. You, you, do, you right? cannot. You cannot. You cannot serve two masses. It's almost next impossible. You can't cause you 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 eight to five is crazy people. Yeah. <laughs> eight yeah. to five is crazy because yeah. as an account manager, you are. Uh, for example, my 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 account was Unilever. Mm -hmm. So I, anything, and you know what, it is BTL. So anything like reports and sales and anything with sales is always crazy. Yeah. But it's always daily and it's always on numbers and you get all that and you have to come up with concepts because since I was a creative, I was also put in the creative department. Mm -hmm. So you still have to brainstorm and come up with concepts. But your eight to five normal thing is still there. You still have yeah. to make, um, do reports, come up with proposals, pitch, uh, pitch for more job goals. Try to, you know, it's crazy. So you can't create. You can't create. I used to try. I used to try. It's like, okay, I'll do Friday. Then on Sunday, go. It's like you can't. Go. You're waking up. The report the clients calling you. You didn't come. Whatever. You know, so you, like you really, really can't. Okay, you can, 
But, but it's more tedious. It's very, like, it's very hard. Yeah. Very hard. But I was saying, like, did it affect, like, after? Yeah, like, so I know, definitely. I was, not, I was not, I was not. After, after the job, after you quit, I'm saying. Or coming back to coming my creativity. Back, yeah, coming back. That's where I am right now. Yeah, that's where I'm right now. I'm coming back. Yeah, so, so, like, I'm coming back to my creative zone. Mm-hmm. So, that's where, but that's definitely, that's something I want to work on. Mm-hmm. Music is, is, is my passion, you mm-hmm. know. So, mm-hmm. I'll always get back to it, but at my own. At, at your my, pace. At my pace, at what I feel be comfortable for me. Do you want to tour again? Would you like to tour again? I'd love to tour again. I love to travel. Oh. I really love to travel. Uh-huh. I really, uh, I love food. <laughs> <laughs> Hence, we had Marvin and yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. well, there we are. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, I, I mean, I love food. I, I still want to travel again. Uh-huh. Um, but I still have a family that's still at the end of the day. Yeah. So, like, I'm still trying to struggle yeah. on that. You know, people like know me giving me inspiration. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> when are you going to start a family? Yes. Is there like a Mrs. Pin in the. <laughs> There's no Mrs. Pin in the. There's anywhere, no Mrs. Pin. Anywhere in the vicinity. That be he's single, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I'm not ready to mingle. Not that's the worst part about it. You're not ready to mingle. <laughs> You're focusing on you. That's yeah, what's you know, for now, I'm just, I'm just, I just. I just want to tour. I just want to live. Yeah. Yeah. Rediscover yourself. Discover yourself. Yeah. Like, what would be the ideal like day for you? You know, right now, if you had like whatever your dream job right now, what would be an ideal day for Big wow. Pin? You know, to be like you gotta on a make 50, money. <laughs> to be on a like a fifty-story building on all glass. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Just looking around. Uh huh. With know. Mrs. Pin. No, no, no. Oh, okay. Before Mrs. Pin comes. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, my God. It's a bachelor pad. <laughs> yeah, it'll be a bachelor pad for, for sure. Okay. Just just to to be fulfilled with what I really doing. want to do. Yeah. With what I'm doing. I think yeah. that, yeah. And to I be successful in it. I think everyone has to have that definitely. fulfillment. I think fulfillment, have, yeah. yeah. that fulfillment to make sure, like, what you're doing has purpose. Yeah, purpose, yeah, exactly. Purpose. Yes, there's the money, definitely, which you look for, but it's something which you like to do. Something yeah. which I want to do what I love to do. Yeah. What this is what I love to do. This is, I mean, this is um, music is what I love. Uh, tunes and beats and, and and anything music is is whatever. So definitely, be definitely that way. And as much as I want, maybe older. I mean, in my fifties. I want to 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 to. I'm big in sports as well. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm, I'm, since I was, I was sports or whatever. So maybe later on, I want to I want to have like an academy, like a talent academy.